All right, so you're interested in making some wax melts from home, but without a dedicated workspace. No worries, as you probably know, you can do that from your kitchen. The kitchen makes a great place to make candles and melts. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's video. If you are new here, welcome aboard. I would encourage you to subscribe. This channel is dedicated to teaching all about candle and wax melt making, as well as running the business side of things. Hopefully you find a lot of value in this channel. And for all of you that are already subscribers, welcome back. This video is just gonna be a walkthrough of me making a few small batches of wax melt. So you can see that even from your kitchen, the comfort of your own kitchen, that you can still make several different wax melt types in one setting with relative ease. You don't need this complicated, elaborate workflow setup. You can do it all from your kitchen with just a little bit of proper preparation and planning and uh, I think you'll get great results. So this video, similar to another few videos that I'm working on of showing how to run your candle making operations without a dedicated candle workshop per se, we're gonna do that same type of video here. And so I have pre-recorded me making these a few different batches of wax melts. And again, I'm only making um, what I would con consider small batches. So basically six melts um, at a time of each one of these different scents. Because I think starting out, that's a pretty common number to make. Um, it, it's a relatively small size. You can do it in a small uh, pitcher. And so we're gonna make six wax melts of each kind. And we're gonna do it from the kitchen, like many of you would probably be doing yourself. And I'm just gonna show you one way that you can do that and kind of what that process looks like for me if I was gonna make it uh, for my kitchen. And then because I'm just focused on making the products and recording that ahead of time, and then I want to be able to explain what I'm doing in my processes. I'll go back and re-record my audio over top so that I can kind of stop and pause and talk the, talk my way through the process. So hopefully you enjoy this video. Again, hit the like button, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell notification below as well so that you are alerted of future videos whenever I do post them. So I hope you enjoy this. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so obviously the first thing I'm gonna do is put on the gloves. I talked about this in a couple of videos. Um, I, I think keeping your hands clean um, is not only gonna cut down on your own mess, but also keep your products clean as well. Candles, melts, everything. So the first thing after putting on gloves and regular equipment, I will um, start weighing out the wax I need. Now you'll see me referencing a few sheets of paper here. I mentioned this in a few videos as well. I use some software to track all of my recipes, my inventory, my materials, my manufacturers, everything. So I would encourage you to check out that video if you haven't already. But essentially I've printed off the batch recipes that I'm gonna make today. And so I just referenced that to make sure I'm going to add enough wax for the first batch that I'm going to make into this pot. And so I have the pitching, uh, the pouring pot, excuse me, on the scale, tear it out. And I believe this first batch is going to be clean cotton wax melts, which I call laundry day. And so it needs basically 14 ounces of wax to make six of these melts. Then you're going to see me just set it aside into the canning pot. Uh, and start doing a double boil. So it's filled with water, uh, maybe a third or halfway, enough just to, the bottom portion of the pot to be in the water. And I'll bring that to a boil and uh, just start melting that down. Now, because I'm making several batches, we're gonna repeat the same process here. And all these batches are the same size, so they're gonna use all the same amount of wax. So I'm just getting two of these going at the same time to kind of increase efficiency, add them both in. Couple of things to consider here. When doing this, be careful. Uh, that you don't get any water in your wax pitchers. Uh, water and wax do not mix well and it will cause you problems. So just be careful when you are putting multiple ones in the same pot together. Now here I'm just laying out the wax melts that are gonna be using. Um, again, I'm gonna set out 12 of them since I'm gonna be basically having two pots going at the same time. But uh, I just line them all out on the edge of a counter just to make it a little bit easier. And I set them on paper towels as well just to prevent a little over you know, over pouring. Okay, so here I'm taking out the first uh, pouring pitcher of melted wax, and I was ch regularly checking the temperature with the heat gun. And once it got to about, you know, 190 or so is when I pulled it out. Um, and, you know, I, I, try to, I try to get wax melted to the 190 to 200 mark, and then I will add UV inhibitor first. Now with the batch this size, it's only a quarter teaspoon. And I add that to all my candle products, waxes and candles. And I add that first. Uh, you want it, the wax to be as hot as possible whenever you mix that in. And then same with dye. So the next thing I'll do is add my dye. Um, now in this case, cotton, I don't have any dye in this. This is just a plain white natural colored wax. 
So I go straight to the oil and I add oil around 180 um, with this wax and clean cotton as well as all the other ones we're going to make today are going to be at um, an amount of around one and a half ounces. So it's roughly 10%, a little bit higher. For wax melts, that's the amount I like to use. For candles, I'm usually around eight to 9% at the most. But for wax melts, you can generally squeeze a little bit more oil in there and you're not dealing with wicking, so you don't have to worry about those type of problems. You also see me pouring over a skewer there. I mentioned this in another video. It's a great tip to help uh, control pouring without getting oils going down the side of the jar or onto the table. And so once I measured out the oil, now I'm, I'm measured in a really funky way here with a cup on top of a cup. That's because I didn't have, again, I'm doing this for my kitchen to kind of keep it realistic to what everyone else is doing. And I don't really have any my many of my workshop materials here. So just using what I have around and it worked fine. And then I add the oil in, get it stirred nice and well. Now to speed things up, I'm not going to show the entire process of me stirring the entire time, um, but I do stir for a good minute or so. Um, generally, the most important thing is I just tend to stir until it's time to pour. And so I don't want to pour wax melts too hot because it can actually eat through um, the container, the plastic container. So I try to pour definitely no hotter than 160, but I'm usually around the 150 mark or 155 when I start pouring um, because and, and wax melts will melt up a little bit quicker or I'm sorry, harden up a little quicker. Now we're going to move over to where I had the clamshells laid out. And we're just going to start filling them up. I'm really careful um, here on the first couple to kind of get the flow going. And I've been doing this long enough now. I, I generally can just fill them right to the top um, almost every time. And I can't tell you the last time I've really spilled any, which is kind of ironic because early on, I, I swear I couldn't pour one cleanly for, you know, for the life of me. But I've definitely been doing it long enough now. I've kind of got it down to a science. So I fill them up to the top. I see a lot of people fill them much lower. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I, I feel like they, they don't look, I feel like customers look like they're getting gypped a little bit. So I fill them pretty much all the way. You don't want them all completely full so that they're touching a lid because um, it'll just smear and make them look ugly, but mostly all the way up. And then you see me cleaning out the wax melts. Now, be, the type of wax for wax tarts is a little stickier and hardens up quicker. So I use the heat gun to reheat the inside of the, the pouring pitcher before I wipe it down. It just makes it a lot easier. Container wax is a lot easier to get out, but with uh, this harder wax for wax melts, um, heating it up is good. Now that it's cleaned out and why the other one is still going, let's go ahead and add more wax, get it measured up and get it in the uh, double boiler as well. So we can kind of keep this efficient process moving along. So again, I'm just gonna keep changing these through, just keep cycling them out like this because we're gonna make five, I believe, five different wax melts in this video. And so I'm just kind of showing you how to keep that process going. You always have something melting and something making at the same time, and that's a good way to keep things efficient. So we've got the other one out for the next batch. I believe this next batch is gonna be a, a banana nut bread. And I add the UV inhibitor, a quarter teaspoon again, and I use a half a teaspoon per pound of UV inhibitor. And then this particular candle, uh, I'm sorry, this particular color of this, I just use a four drops of golden honey, um, at least in this size. Again, my sheets there of my manufacturer recipes tell me exactly what I need of all my materials based off the size of the batch I made. And uh, so it's it's a great, great way to keep things in order. Then, of course, I'm always constantly checking the temperature. I, I try to keep my process as specific and focused as possible. So I keep an eye on the temperature all the time. Once I see the temperature reach about 180, I'm going to go ahead and add my oil. Again, roughly 10% and the same trick I used before. I'm going to go down the skewer keep that oil from running down the side of the bottle and making a mess. Now, when you're doing larger batches and you're pointing to a bigger, a bigger measuring device, then you don't really need to do this. But for small amounts like this, this is a perfect little trick to keep you from spilling a drop. You can use anything. It can be a metal skewer. It can be a toothpick, whatever. I just have so many wooden skewers that I tend to use those. Then I'm going to add the oil in, give it another mix around again. And, and you know, I'll speed this up like I mentioned before. Keep measuring, and when it's time, I bring out the uh, the spoon, clean it off, and we're back to pouring. So you can see those other ones are firming up pretty quick already, and it's only been a couple minutes since we started working on this next batch of wax, or of, of candle melts. So same process, I uh, just fill them up most of the way. Um, I'll usually leave a little bit to, t to top off if I need to, just so I don't leave myself one short on accident if I measured incorrectly. Um, but, but again, generally, like I said, um, my process is pretty specific at this point, even from the kitchen. 
so that I generally have the exact amount I need at this point. And those kind of harden up to this nice kind of uh, kind of golden brownish color like you would imagine for a banana bread. Once again, clean out the jar using the heat gun and a paper towel, and then we load it up with another 14 ounces of wax. Now this particular wax is Pro Blend 650. I did not mention that before, but this is a 50-50 soy paraffin wax. It makes really good melts. Um, it's similar to Pillar of Bliss from Nature's Garden, but this one is from Flaming Candle Company. So getting that mixed in as well, and it does come in that granular form, so I'm getting that melted while we move on to the next one. And I believe this next one is Harvest Moon. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm telling you the right ones in order here. I don't recall which ones I made, but seeing that I'm using a little bit of yellow here and a little bit of orange, that is what I use for my Harvest Moon. And I know that I made it, so I think I've got that right here. I believe I used uh, four drops of yellow and two drops of orange here for this size. And yes, that is the Harvest Moon. I use Harvest from Nature's Garden. It's a really, really great scent. Same trick with the skewer here. I'm gonna load this up to about 1.5 ounces. Again, roughly 10%. It's actually a little bit more. It's, it's closer to 10 and a half with wax melts. And that's, that's generally what I use uh, as my standard with this wax. So mix it in, give it a nice good stir again. Now you don't wanna to stir too quickly, um, but I really, I really prefer using these spoons. I know it looks like I'm stirring super fast there, but it's just sped up 500 times. <laughs> I really like the spoons. It doesn't cause near as many air bubbles. Um, as like a skewer or a spatula, or I'm sorry, a skewer or a whisk would. Anyways, now, now that it's ready to go, we've reached that temperature of around 160 or a tad less. I start pouring these into the containers and top them off a little bit. Great golden yellow orange color. And uh, I, I went with kind of a more of a yellow than an orange that you would think for a harvest moon, but I had so many other orange, bright orange colors for fall candles and wax melts that I went with a little bit more of a yellow on this, but it's still, a, it's still representative of the name. And so I think I'm loading up the last batch of wax that needs to be melted here. And then it's going to be time to bring out the fourth. Well, actually it looks like that wasn't melted yet. So what I'm doing now is closing these containers. Once they become pretty firm, I go ahead and close them up and get them out of the way, scoot them back so that I can make room for the next ones. Again, if you've got more room and you've got bigger tables and a lot more space, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to keep things in order, close them up when I can, keep debris and dust out of them, um, and then just move them back out of the way and make some more room. And so now I'm checking the temperature. It looks like it must have hit that 190 or so range. So I pull it out of the melting pot and or the double boiler. I'm going to add the UV inhibitor once again first. Just keeps your colors from fading a little sooner than they normally would, um, or as quickly as they normally would, I should say. This is a peppermint patty. This is a new one for me, um, but it is a kind of a great minty green color like you would kind of think of for a peppermint patty. And so for this, I used uh, a little bit of uh, key lime green and blue, or sea breeze, sea breeze color actually. Um, and then once again, mix those colors in first. That's always the order that I do. UV inhibitor, then color, then oil, and always add oil around 180. Another one and a half, uh, one and a half ounces of oil. Get it in there mixed up pretty well. Apparently someone was talking to me while I was doing that. <laughs> oh, and then my, uh, my other small camera died on me. Uh, so I didn't have the overhead shot anymore. So my middle son is holding the camera for me so I could just continue to show you this uh, pouring process. And it's just a really, really nice color. You can get a glimpse of it there as soon as it hits um, the, the clamshell before it fills up all the way. It's a little bit more green than what looks there. Uh, it's it's really, really nice, nice color. So once again, you can see that I fill it up pretty much all the way to the brim and then uh, call it good. And there's four out of the five. Now I don't show the process of making the top right one, that other green one there, which was caramel apple, just because that camera had died on me. But I did end up making that fifth and final batch of wax melts. And here I'm just using my pre-made labels. Now I have a unique way of doing wax melt labels. I wanted a way to print all of my wax labels in bulk if I could, and then leave a spot to add the scent. Um, also right here, I'm showing you what, in my opinion, a proper wax melt should look like and feel like. 
It should not be hard, hard, but it also should not be soft and sticky where you can't really touch it without getting some residue. And it should come out of the container nice and clean, but still feel relatively soft and not like a rock. And so I just kind of showed you it should pop out fairly easily like that and put it back in with no residue. Anyways, back to my wax melt labels, that's my design. And you see that circle cut out in the middle. I left that intentionally. And what I do for each scent is I have this little design with a gray, light gray and white barn effect with a scent name on top. Um, you'll see them here at the very end when I show a shot of the finished melts. I don't have any great, I, I didn't have any great photos on hand to add to this of my uh, wax melts like product photography like I did in my previous candle video, but you can still see you know, a rough shot out of camera sitting on a shelf, what they look like. But anyways, this is a really efficient way to do wax melt labels because you can order these in bulk, which I did. I did, I ordered like 10,000 of them with this design and they cost me pennies. And then that way, um, if I add more scents over time, change my scent names, I'm not out any money and wasted labels. I just print the small circle labels that I put in the middle, which again, you'll see that at the end here. So last one I'm, I'm adding labels to here is the laundry day super speed motion here because it can be a little monotonous to sit here and watch me label every one of them. And I just be careful to smooth them all out and we're gonna show you a little shot of the five sets that we made today. And then this is kind of what a finished product looks like. You can see the scents that I printed off and stuck in the middle to kind of keep with my theme and the overall look of the wax melts. Um, so I hope you really enjoyed this video. Also I do uh, add in the warning label on the inside as well underneath the label. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.